Deputy Thank you very much, Ken Corla. Um, Tanish, I'm delighted to be speaking today to mark the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. For a whole generation of young people in Ireland, the Troubles are a period of our Ireland's history, of our past. A time to be remembered, to be studied, to learn from, but a time of our past. And thanks to the historic agreement, there is now a whole new generation who have only ever known peace. And that's an outcome that many of the signatories of the Good Friday Agreement could only have dreamed of in the height of the Troubles. And for all the limitations of the Good Friday Agreement, we know we are all better off for the peace it has brought to our island. I remember myself being a primary school student when the Good Friday Agreement was signed. And even at that young age, there was a huge sense of excitement amongst my generation and my classmates. We probably didn't fully grasp the gravity of what was happening, but there was a palpable feeling of optimism and hope in the air. And even during the times when hope has waned over the past 25 years, the strength of the Good Friday Agreement has endured. And ultimately, peace has prevailed. A 25-year anniversary was no doubt something that the key signatories of the Good Friday Agreement could only dared to have hoped for. And that's why the recent events in Belfast and in Queen's University have been so especially encouraging because they've been a moment to stop and to take stock of how far we have come. And it's generated a kind of a renewed sense of optimism for what is yet to come. And I want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the political leaders without whom the Northern Ireland peace process and the Good Friday Agreement could not have been achieved. Leaders like John Hume and David Trimble, key architects of the peace process, and others including Bertie O'Hearn and Tony Blair, Mo Molum, David Andrews, Bill Clinton, and so, so many others. People who represented the epitome of leadership, of mediation, of compromise, and of sacrifice for the greater common good. But of course, all of this celebration we've had recently of the Good Friday Agreement only serves to highlight the fact that today, Northern Ireland has no sitting government. And power sharing, a key hallmark of this agreement, is absent. And I know that no one feels the impact of an absent government more than the people of Northern Ireland. People who now, more than ever, regardless of political affiliation, need their political representatives advocating for them, legislating for them, taking their seats in their parliament. And it is vital that power sharing is restored for the people of Northern Ireland. I cannot speak for the people of Northern Ireland or their political parties, nor should I or would I. But I do know that they are facing the same challenges that we are in the Republic in terms of cost of living, housing, healthcare and climate crisis. And I think that in the spirit of the Good Friday Agreement, that same example of leadership, of mediation, of negotiation and of sacrifice is needed now from all sides of the political spectrums and it's needed right now. It's needed to get power sharing back up and running and it's needed to restore the institutions to allow the work of the Good Friday Agreement to continue.